axles remain a popular way of holding the wheels on off-road vehicles. In this video, we're going to look at some of the ways you can hold those beam axles onto the vehicle. Let's go! Just like a wheel, an axle has six degrees of freedom. So it can move forwards and backwards, side to side, up and down, and then it can rotate around three axes. So when you're braking or accelerating, that torque wants to twist the axle, wants to make it rotate under the vehicle. You can also steer the axle, so it can rotate about a vertical axis. And you can also articulate the axle, so you can make one, one wheel go up and the other wheel go down. So the job of your location mechanism is to control those six degrees of motion. So typically what you want is you'll want your axle to be able to articulate, so you want one wheel to be able to go up and the other go down, and you also want the axle to be able to go up and down in bump and rebound, uh, because that takes out the, 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 the bumps coming from the terrain. You don't necessarily want the axle to be able to go forwards and backwards, although that can be helpful sometimes, and you don't really want the axle to steer, and you certainly don't want the axle to twist when you're braking or accelerating. So the simplest way of doing that is with a trunnion arrangement. So a trunnion axle just has a dirty great big hinge in the middle of it that takes out five of the degrees of freedom and leaves you with just that articulation. Now, trunnion axles typically found on the front of agricultural tractors and on construction machinery, excavators, those kinds of things. Um, they have no vertical motion, so they have no bump and rebound. Um, so they're not great for absorbing road shocks um, and therefore aren't great for vehicles that travel above about 20 miles an hour. Below those speeds you can use the tyres to act as your suspension medium and get away with a reasonable level of ride comfort. But anything above those speeds, not really going to work. The trunnion axle has some advantages to it, um, not least the fact that you've got zero articulation stiffness at the front, and that means that the, the axle can articulate without needing a great deal of force to move it. Um, obviously you can't have trunnion axles at both ends or your vehicle will fall over. The next method of locating a beam axle uses leaf springs. Now leaf springs have been around for hundreds of years and hold up all kinds of different vehicles. Um, they've kind of gone out of fashion a little bit for um, road cars, um, although a lot of uh, commercial vehicles, both light and heavy, um, still use leaf springs as their, uh, as their suspension. Um, leaf springs are really good because they combine uh, the spring medium uh, with the location devices. So the leaf springs typically hold the axle in place as well as providing the springing. So leaf springs provide good longitudinal location. Uh, typically when you're mounting a leaf spring it will have uh, a fixed pivot at one end and then a shackle at the other that allows the spring to lengthen and shorten as it's being compressed. So you do tend to get some wheel recession with leaf springs, so the axle tends to go backwards and forwards as, the, uh, as it's going up and down, um, but it's not that pronounced. Um, the lateral motion of the axle is controlled by basically trying to bend the spring sideways. Now leaf springs tend to be extremely stiff laterally, so you don't really get a great deal of lateral motion uh, with, with, with a leaf spring. The braking loads and the acceleration loads are taken out by essentially trying to wrap the spring around the axle, which tends not to be a problem with low powered vehicles or low speed or low mass vehicles but can become a problem with uh, faster vehicles or heavier vehicles, uh, particularly under braking uh, or where you've got a great deal of torque um, trying, to, trying to rotate that axle. When an axle that is supported by leaf springs tries to articulate, then it does need to twist the leaf spring uh, to move into that position. So you tend to get quite a lot of articulation stiffness with leaf springs. Um, and that's one of the big downsides to using a leaf spring. So they are very efficient from an axle location point of view and, and very good from a packaging point of view, but not great from uh, an overall mobility point of view because of their high articulation stiffness. So next we move on to multi-link arrangements for holding beam axles in place. 
So the first link uh, we'll consider is the panard rod. Uh, the panard rod is a link that runs straight across the vehicle from one side to the other. So one side of the panard rod pivots on the chassis and the other end of the panard rod pivots on the axle. Uh, that allows the axle to move up and down. Um, it forces it to move laterally a little bit, so it does move from side to side, and you can't get rid of that with a panard rod. You, you are bound to end up with some side to side motion. The panard rod doesn't do anything about longitudinal location and doesn't affect the uh, articulation stiffness. Um, if you're modifying a vehicle, uh, for example by raising its suspension, you need to carefully consider uh, the layout of the panard rod. Uh, what you don't want is for the panard rod to be sloping steeply downhill. So ideally, you want all the links in your suspension to be more or less parallel to the surface. That's a good starting point. Um, if you end up with a steeply sloping panard rod, as you might do if you raise your suspension without adjusting the panard rod mounts, then you'll find that the axle moves sideways a significant amount um, as the axle's going into bump and rebound. Uh, and that can be quite disturbing to the ride of the vehicle. One thing you must always avoid is having the panard rod at the front of the vehicle pointing in the opposite direction to the panard rod at the rear. What you end up with in that situation is as the vehicle bounces up and down, the front axle travelling laterally in the opposite direction to the rear axle. So the, the body of the vehicle actually twists above its axles. So as you're riding along on a bumpy road, it feels like the vehicle is yawing, when in actual fact all that's happening is the body is twisting above its axles. So if you've got a panard rod front and rear, then you should try and arrange them so that they both point in the same direction, either to the left or to the right. So the next lateral location uh, mechanism is the Watts linkage. The Watts linkage comprises three links. So these three links allow you to have vertical motion of the axle without having any lateral motion. So you can see that as the axle is going up and down, the link in the middle that is pivoted onto the axle is able to rotate and that takes out all of the lateral motion that would otherwise be introduced by the other links. The Watts linkage has been used quite a bit uh, in production SUVs. So things like the Land Rover Discovery used a Watts linkage to do the lateral location of its back axle. Next up is four link suspension. So four link suspension provides lateral and longitudinal location and also reacts uh, torque from both braking and accelerating. So four link suspension is obviously very simple because you only have four links and those links can all be the same if you want them to be. Um, the idea is that two of the links point in in a, in a V shape. That V shape provides triangulation uh, that prevents the axle from moving laterally, so it prevents it from moving sideways. The other two links are generally arranged so that they're pointing pretty much straight forwards or straight back, and that provides you with the longitudinal location of the axle, uh, so stops the axle from moving backwards and forwards. And then the action of the four links together reacts the torque loads, so stops the axle from rotating when you brake or when you're accelerating. Four link suspension, very popular on uh, the highest performance, high mobility off-road vehicles. So things like Ultra 4 racers very often use uh, four link suspension. Four link suspension is very tunable. It's very easy to uh, manipulate it to give you the kind of uh, axle motions and actual axle behaviors that you might want. The close cousin of four link suspension is five link suspension. In five link suspension, that tends to have four links that are parallel to one another. So you effectively have a, a pair of parallel trailing arms on either side. And then you have a panard rod running across the vehicle to give you your lateral location. So the four links give you your longitudinal location and also react the axle torque. And then your panard rod running across the vehicle gives you your lateral location. Five link suspension is quite popular on the back of things like Escort rally cars. 
The other alternative you have is that you can join the top two links together to create an A-frame. So the A-frame can be very rigid and provides you with lateral and longitudinal location uh, and is usually paired up with a pair of radius arms that finish off the job of uh, longitudinally locating the axle and prevent it from steering. And then finally we have radius arms. Uh, as used on things like the front of Land Rover Defender and uh, early Land Rover Discoveries. So here we have a big squidgy bush at the chassis end, uh, which allows the, the radius arm to move up and down, also allows it to move laterally and provides isolation between the arm and the chassis. At the other end, you get two squidgy bushes that locate the, the radius arm onto the axle. Now obviously if you want to articulate that axle then all of those bushes have to squidge out of the way. So you get a fair amount of articulation stiffness just from the stiffness of the bushes. Um, also because of the, the way that these tend to be designed they don't provide any lateral location so they're usually paired up with something like a, a panard rod to, to give you the lateral location of the axle. So what do we know now? Um, we've seen that there are a wide variety of ways of locating beam axles onto the chassis of an off-road vehicle. We haven't really talked very much about what those uh, different mechanisms do to the performance of the vehicle and what they do to its ride and handling. In later videos we'll look at some of the ride and handling dynamics of off-road vehicles and talk about the way in which the mechanism that you choose to hold the axle onto the vehicle can affect that, the ride and handling of the vehicle. So, if you like this video and want more content, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Thanks for watching.